So the next thing that we're going to talk about is we are actually going to go back to graphing. It's been a little while since we've graphed. Um, but so far in this class, we've graphed linear equations, all right, and that's a, a line, all right, and we've also graphed exponential functions. And what does an exponential function look like? What does that look like? Can you draw it with your finger? This one oh. has a line. Has like a it's like a is it curving? No, it's yeah, this one. Yeah, it's like the one where it's like, woo, 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 woo. I like it, I like it. Okay. Well, today we're going to learn our next function, and this is um, a function that's going to carry you into algebra two. Okay. So we are going to graph quadratic functions. So what is a quadratic function? Do we know anything about? It has four. Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't we have to take four. notes. Okay, so um, I gave you a little sheet that has a bunch of different little graphs on it. Okay, so I want you to pull that out. And it says, where is the vertex of a parabola? It's right here. It's right here, Chris. That is okay. No big deal. Oh. Not a big deal. All right, let me get to the right feature. All right, so what is a quadratic function? Uh, it doesn't have four. Okay, it doesn't have four. Okay, quadratic. It goes in all. It goes in all of the um, quadrants. Okay, that's a possibility. There's a vertex form and a standard. There is. That is correct. Y'all are good. Okay. So. A quadratic function, all right, well, let's see what it looks like. A quadratic function is actually x squared, y equals x squared. All right, I know that's weird. Quad normally means 4, but in this case, it doesn't mean 2, x squared. The largest exponent is 2. So if I give you an equation, you know that it's a quadratic equation because the largest exponent is a 2. Just like with exponential functions, we knew that it was an exponential equation because where was the variable? In front of the other. It was a coefficient. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the coefficient. It was an exponential function? Yes, on an exponential function. How did I know the equation was an exponential? The variable was in the exponent position. Okay. The way that I know this is, an, is a quadratic equation is because the largest exponent is 2. Okay. So we're going to start with graphing and then we're going to move into solving equations. All right. I love quadratic functions, by the way, so I get real excited here in this unit. So what does a quadratic function look like? Any, any thoughts? Something x squared. Okay. Well, why don't we see what the parent function of a quadratic looks like? All right. So y equals x squared. Oh, look at it. All right. So this is the parent function of a quadratic equation. All right. What shape does that look like? A u. A u. It looks a like a u. A b. Oh, actually. Okay, all right. It looks kind of like a B, but a B, to me it has more of a curve, a curve yeah. at the bottom, so I see more of a one straight vertex. Okay. It's like a sharp. We call a quadratic function, we call this U-shaped figure a parabola. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A -A. Parabola. Parabola. Okay, but it's a parabola. All right, but some people say it parabola because that's how they had to say it to spell it. That's what we call it. Okay. Um, all right. Now this is the parent function. It's a u. Okay. Now you don't know much else about a parabola yet. Okay. There's not just a ton that you know about a quadratic function other than y equals x squared. When I graph it, it makes some u-shaped figure called a parabola. Okay. So what you are about to do is you're going to do a little exploration with this quadratic, with a quadratic function. All right. Do y'all remember when we learned? Um, absolute value functions, the V functions, when we made the V's. Y'all remember the V's? We had parent functions and we moved them left, right, up, oh, down, yes. we turned them upside down. Yes. Okay. Yes. Similar concept to this. Okay. And we're going to move it around. But I need you to become more familiar with what a quadratic function is first. Okay. So you should have that sheet. All right. This one that looks like this. Make sure you're on the side that has the title, where's the vertex of a parabola, okay? We're going to work through the first part together, all right? And then I'm going to let you and your group do the, ex do the rest of the exploring part, okay? So, number one, we've already graphed the equation, right? 
we did it up here. Y equals X squared. So let me ask you this. A vocabulary word that we've talked about before and it's coming back up again, the vertex. Where would you say the vertex is of this parabola? The median point. What would the ordered pair of the vertex be? Zero, zero. Why do you say it's zero, zero? Because that's where it hits. That's where it hits the... Uh, okay. Wouldn't that be like... You aren't getting somewhere. Okay. It wouldn't be like the starting well, would it? Not necessarily the starting point, but I would say this is the lowest point, right? It kind of like splits the line in half. Okay, okay. So we're going somewhere. All right, so you would say the vertex is at zero, zero, right? In which direction is this opening? Um, Does my U open up or down? Up. It opens up, okay. So this is what we call the parent function. All right, so this is before I do any kind of transformation or anything like that. So, what you're going to do is you are going to use your graphing calculator, all right, to complete the rest of this activity with your group members, all right. Um, do you all remember how to get to the graphing portion of the graphing calculator? Y, y equals. Y equals, and then you would just type in the equation, okay. Make sure that you are careful if there's a parenthesis, you use the parenthesis key. All right. Do you remember where the square key is? Okay. So you'll use those. Now I want to point something out. If you notice, all right, on, like on number two, for instance, it has three <laughs> little graphs. All right. You would sketch a picture of that graph, and then you would answer the question of the vertex and which direction does it open. Okay. And then it's got two questions. All right, I really want you to put some thought into answering those questions, okay? Because I'm gonna give you some time to work through this with your group, and then I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna give each of your groups a poster, and you're gonna write your answers to these questions, all right? And then we're gonna talk about them as a group overall. What did you see happen? It's basically kind of you're making um, a generalization about what you saw, okay? So I'm not asking for anything profound, all right, but just you're telling me what you th what you saw, and so I do need you to put a little bit of thought into it. Okay, don't just write one little word. Does that make sense? Okay, so go ahead and get started. Work with your group through, and you will go all the way to the end. Okay, yes, ma'am. X squared plus two. Yeah, yeah, you, and if you want to leave the parent function in y one, so you can always compare back. That's perfectly acceptable as well. Because that's the next, that's the next part. Oh, I thought we were doing here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the timer on the board. All right, so make sure you're working and I'll be coming around. Feel free to ask questions. Try to be as specific as you can on those questions. As I'm walking around, some of you say, moves here, moves here. What is moving? Like 
negative. Okay. And integers are like, and the whole numbers and their opposites. Yeah. And then obviously your fractions are your fractions. Mm -hmm. But they mean a proper fraction, like not an improper fraction, five over three. So what are you noticing is the difference between when it's a, an integer and when it's a fraction? Okay, and as this number increased, it also got. Yeah, if you go back to your parent from here, it's definitely a lot. Can you? So that's kind of what it's wanting to see. Can you do something to like make it tell you the points? Um, you can hit trace, and then you can go to that point. Oh, it doesn't show. But you should kind of be able to figure it out. You should know roundabout. Hopefully, by now, you've kind of seen what, what's happened based on what you've seen on the front of the page. Based on what, using these and this, you should be able to know what it's going to be without being able to see exactly where it's at on it. Because what did you, what, well, what did you notice? If I, what did you say? The the up. Up. Okay. And then here it moved. Okay. So I'm going to just sketch it without. Yeah. Good. See, those conclusions, those generalizations are going to help. Because putting it in the calculator gets kind of tedious, doesn't it? Yeah. That is our goal. By the end of this, I want you to be able to graph Okay, so now it's moving it up, down, and left and right. Y'all kind of pause there for just a second. All right. So on the board, I have three questions for you. All right. And they're very similar to the ones that I asked you to pay close attention to as you work through this activity. All right. So as you were working on this activity, I walked around and gave each group a poster. All right. So I want you to take that poster and under the desk, there should be a bucket with markers and all that good stuff in it. Um, so you can leave that bucket out. So with your group members, I want you to discuss the answers to these three questions based off of what you saw. Okay? And you are answering those questions on the poster. And then we're going to talk about them together. Okay? Is that one going work? Where are you going to work? Yeah, that's fine. So, these three questions, discuss them with your group, come up with a good answer, all right? And then that's what you're writing on the poster. And I don't need a complete sentence, guys, but I do need a well thought out answer to answer those questions. Use some vocabulary. We talked about the vertex. When you add it or subtract it from the outside. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. Did you notice anything funny about when it was inside the parentheses? Is that what y'all saw? Did y'all see the same thing too? Alright. So. I can laugh down. What did you think? Is that what they saw? Or is that just what you saw? Do you oh, agree with them? Outside? Mm -hmm. You can disagree. It's okay. okay. Just make sure we have it. How does it affect How does it affect the body? How does it affect the yes? There we go. Are we able to 
I know you saw it because y'all told me what I want you to be. Mm -hmm. um, negative. Okay, so the number three does answer a lot. So, so you have to write two different Yeah, that's right. Like here, you just did like a general thing. So you can say like a yeah. lot Okay, so the range of numbers within. So if it was this, it got that. And if it was that, yeah. So, what effects turn that inside is like negotiation of by determining what you're doing. There you go. And what else? Does it do anything else? It definitely affects the wedge. Does it affect any? Did you notice? It directs whether it goes up or down. Is that what you were asking? Is that what you were asking? I don't know. I mean, maybe she's trying to do it. Sorry guys. It is just fine. <laughs> Go ahead and finish up. What is that? I don't know. Okay, so based off what I'm seeing as your answers to number one, um, H affects the, I'm sorry, not H, K affects the vertex of the function by moving it up or down mm -hmm. on the Y axis. All right, and all groups answers shows that you are able to see that. So it's safe to say that anytime I add or subtract outside the parentheses, what is that going to do to my parent function? Determine if it goes up or down. It's going to determine if the vertex is going to move up or down. Okay, so with that in mind, how does H affect the vertex? Peyton? It determines if it'll go left or right. So it determines if it goes left or right. Okay, let me ask you this. What happens if I add or subtract something on the inside and on the outside? What do you expect the vertex to do? Then it'll go either up or down and left or right. So it'll move both different ways. It'll do something like this, okay? Um, and your last question was how does A affect the parent function? All right, Josh, what did, how did A affect it? Jeremiah, can you help them out? That's okay. It affects how, how wide it opens up and which direction it opens up. Okay. Um, so, Aiden, be a little bit more specific. Uh, it determines how wide the parabola is. Like, okay. If it's negative, it's going to, or if it's negative, it's going to be wide, correct? Not if it's negative. If it's a parabola, okay, hang on, hang on. No. Orion, you are going somewhere. Wait, it's going to open down when? My parabola is going to open down when? Haley? Um, when A is negative. Very good. Good job. All right. So if A is positive, my parabola is up. If A is negative, it's going to go down. So Jeremiah was correct in saying that it affects my direction. He also says that it affects like my width. Ooh. Okay, and Aiden was going somewhere with it. Peyton, see if you can clarify what he was saying. If it's a fraction, it's going to be bigger. Okay, like so okay, so wide. I'm going to have a really wide E. And if it's a, <laughs> and if it is a whole number, what's it going to do? It's going to be in here. It's going to go really, really thin. Okay, so H affects my horizontal shift. K affects my vertical shift, and A affects the direction and the width, okay? So from here, you should now be able to graph a quadratic equation without the calculator. So we use the calculators, all right, um, to kind of give you an introduction, let you become more familiar with them, but now we're done. You're going to be able to graph just by looking at the equation and using the generalizations that we just made. Because we're just that good. You are that good. We're just that good. You're that good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to um, complete an exit ticket. So if you will um, distribute the flickers 
amongst your group members. All right, there it is. All right, so here is your first question. Describe the shape of a quadratic equation. Very good. You all got that one correct. It does form a U. And what's that you called? Parabola. 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 What is the vertex of the parent function? Oh. So of the original parent function, before I move it left, right, up, down, sideways, turn it upside down, what is the original vertex? You can change your answer. Very good. You all got that one correct. It is zero, zero. How does the constant k affect the parent function? Oh, we just move it. I don't. So does k move it horizontally? Does k move it vertically? Does it shrink it? Or does it like reflect it, which is like turning it upside down? So think about how k, where is k in the equation, and how does it affect it? Good. So far, I'm getting some good answers. Alright, All right, go ahead and put your answers up. Good. Alright, the correct answer is b. k is my vertical oh, shift. Yeah. Okay, moves it up and down. Okay. So how does H affect the parent function? Am I guess 13? No, I'm guess 13. Very good. All right, you all got that one correct. It does affect the horizontal shift. Guys, use this little hint. H, horizontal, starts with an H. All right, keep that in mind. And our very last question. How does A affect the parent function? Right. And I moved over to the other side, so just... How does A... All right. It affects the direction and the width. All right, A affects whether it's going to open up or open down, and is it going to be wide or is it going to be skinny. So very good job. All right, tomorrow we will do more with actually graph. We'll do a little bit more practice with graphing, and then we'll also learn how to graph from standard form.